right, what's happening, everybody? I decided to come back, do one more late show tonight. So we're gonna get our paint out of the tube, onto the palette, and I prepped it with our black gesso, created all these little tree shapes and little rocky, shit, uh, rocky shapes with our black gesso, and let that dry completely. And then once it was fully dry, I took our Bob Ross Liquid Clear or linseed oil, put that along the black section, and then the Bob Ross Liquid White, which we put in the top section. You can see a little bit on my glove there. You just need the smallest little amount. And you guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? We're gonna come back and knock out this gorgeous little winter scene, maybe a waterfall into another bigger waterfall. Oh, I can see it already. It's gonna be fantastic. Let me show you what we've done here. We have our Bob Ross Liquid Clear. It looks a whole lot like that. Took that and put it along the bottom section. Put our Bob Ross Liquid White along the top section. And that jar looks a lot like this, All right? Just like that. Everybody's got an old nasty jar. If you don't, you can find them in my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. And I've got all my stuff over there. If you want to buy this painting or find any of my hats, shirts, all sorts of merchandise, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Now we're going to get ready to paint. Let's do some stuff, get all the work out of the way, and now we'll get ready to paint. All right, I wanna have a little bit of our blue undercolor, maybe falling back from underneath this bit of waterfall. Maybe it hits over here, comes back, maybe it falls again, maybe just like that. I will have a little double waterfall sort of deal right back on here, but we wanna have a little blue color wherever we want blue to show up. Gotta have a little blue on the canvas, so we're prepping it with our undercolors. Now, if your canvas is not dry, uh, not wet, and it's dry, it's gonna be very hard to spread this oil paint all around here, right? So, a couple little bits of blue, just tossing them any which way, just in case we get a bit of mist, or some fog, or something coming up off of our waterfall, we'll have these gorgeous blue colors. Now, we've got all of our bottom of our covers, all, uh, canvas all nice and covered. Again, just about halfway up, didn't even cover the whole top. Still covered in our clear, we don't need anything else besides that, right? We're gonna come in with this blue on the brush, and just since we don't have much sky, I'm gonna drop a little bit of blue up here. Now that liquid white is gonna let it blend down and blend and blend and blend, come lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, the more that you blend it with that liquid white that's on the canvas, right? So, how much blending do you have to do? That's all up to you, right? How bright do you want it? Do you want it to just go very, very, very light as it gets down to the bottom? Do you want it to be very thick with color? Very bright blue? What does yours look like? That's what I always say, right? It's not about my painting. This is painting number 803 for me. 803 paintings, guys. Look at how you can just shine light through your little canyon, just like that. It's fantastic. Now, that's probably about the quickest sky that we've ever done in a tutorial because there's not a lot of room for sky in this painting. You just need a little bit, a little bit of sky, a little bit of blue up there. Maybe throw one little white cloud and that's it. Now we're gonna come in here, we're gonna grab a little bit of white. And remember, this is gonna be like a wintry, cold scene, so go grab your jackets. Come in like this, a little bit of white paint, just out there, a little puff, a little puff of a cloud is all you need. Take your big old two-inch brush, just like Bob Ross would. All right. Oh, geez, use the two-inch brush. Boom, just like that, softly mixing it up. The more that you blend it, the more it's gonna go away, so depend on what you like, where you wanna have yours, and we'll be all set to go, right? Now we're gonna come in here, and grab up our little bit of white onto our fan brush, just like that, right out on the end. Now, over here, just using the corner, right? Not gonna use the whole thing, just gonna use the corner of the brush. And we're gonna come out, down. Ooh, little fallen waterfall back there. That's gonna be pretty. Now, where does that thing hit? Maybe it hits over here, like I said. Goes off to the side. And then it maybe stopped and hit again and went rotated over the edge again. We get to decide what we wanna do with it, right? But let's not work it too much. We just want to have a little bit of paint back there, a little bit of mist, a little bit of action as it comes down. Have it roll back down right into that little bit of mistiness. Oh, so cool. All right, and then we can decide what we want it to look like. Come back in with your two inch brush or your one inch brush, whatever's easier for you. Just a little soft little bit of mist back there. All we need, take this guy, flatten him out. Bing, bang, boom. You get all these soft little details as it starts to roll towards us. And we decide how much is going to show. And then, like I said, it's going to fall over the edge with this waterfall. So, it be very neat. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Let's do some trees up here. We're going to save this brush just so that we can use it later. You don't want to get too far. I mean, you could literally do the whole thing in water. And poof, you'd be almost done. So, let's come over here. We're going to mix up a little color because I want to have some gorgeous bits 
of like rock, like almost like a grayish silvery rock, right? So we're going to get some white and get some black, mix those guys up. Now let's get a little bit more black in there because I don't want it to be so super bright, right? And again, this is a winter scene, so you could do it just all snowy, but I'm going to have some areas of our sort of gray colored rock. So let's come in here and we'll scrape up that color just like that. Nice and fantastic. And then we'll decide maybe up here, we had a few little bits of that brighter gray, just getting all crazy around the edge, right? Whatever we want to do with it. Got a little bit of brightness out there. Now watch, as we come in here, we start leaving little bits, little bits, very light with the knife. And that way it looks like little sections of shadow, little bits of this, little bits of that. Turn the knife on the side, leave our little dark areas in there. You don't have to cover up every single thing. And if you cover up too much, take a little of your blue, a little of your black, make our little dark color. Watch this, come in and add our little shadows in there. This wicked cool little thing. All right, we decide what we want it to look like, where the little bits of brightness are, how much paint is on the canvas, how much light is showing, right? We get to decide that. Let's come in here and maybe we'll drop in a bit of our little far off little rocky color right where our water's coming out of back here, right? Right over the top of the waterfall, just so you can't see where the water's coming out of. And then we'll take our little bit of rock, rocky color. Maybe go at an angle like that. Bang, very cool. It just makes the, the rocks look more jagged, more crazy. Right, leave a little bit of darkness and maybe come down and connect both of them. And then you have a little piece. All right, come over here. You want a little bit more? Change the angle. Make them a little bit more flat. Rotate. Right, almost like we could walk up this whole little thing right here. Very cool. We decide based off of our angles what's going to happen, what's rock, what's not, what's showing, what isn't. Very light little pressure can drag very light little details across. Make our rock that much better. Light, 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 light little pressure just to get the smallest little details to go over onto the edge, right? Very cool. Then we decide what we want it to look like. We'll come back in. We'll add some bits of anything, literally do anything. Bits of flowers, trees, snow, rocks, this, that, the other, right? Again, jaggedy, not covering up all the darkness. You don't want to cover up that black, all right? Just coming up in here and just making it all crazy. Like literally, you don't have to do much. Let it get very dark down around the bottom. Doesn't have to be the super brightest thing you ever done did see. Just like that. We slide these guys up a couple little bits here and there, right? Just literally like a little smush will be the coolest, softest little detail you ever had. Now on this black canvas, man, the color shows so brightly. So we're just taking the smallest little bits and starting to build our little canyon as it's coming towards us this way. Man, that looks fantastic. Now, why don't we come up here? We had a couple little bits of rock, maybe got lit up from the edge, right? We decide, do you want to have those trees stand out a little bit more? We can go back and darken them up. Do you want to have them just be nice and soft out there in the distance and have all the rest of this be nice and sheer stone, right? Just rocks everywhere. Totally up to you guys. You don't even really have to do anything with those black gesso trees up there. They look fantastic. They literally look fantastic. Watch, I'm going to take a little bit of our color like this shine it through a little bit of light back in there little things whip it through to the front i right? don't want to get too much paint on the brush for sure little bits i'm sliding in and then we're gonna have just the most fantastic little sky our rocks everything all this depth and detail you don't even need to add any trees it could just be a rocky thing <laughs> just be very cool now let's come back to that white on our brush well the white and the blue right we didn't add any extra paint so let's come back in here, get a little bit more white, right on the tip, just the tip, guys. That's where the brush is like, just the tip right there. And come back in here and add a few more little bits of brightness. See how we left the disconnection in between the bright white and the next bright white? Come back, slide it over, a couple little things, horizontal little bits, a little bit of rotating water, some motion, some rapids, some sort of something back here, right? Just like that, very cool. Now, what we're gonna do is take the same brush, Come over and down, right? You can't just go straight down. And you can't go this way and that way and that way and this way and every which way, right? It's gotta all be the same. So our water was feeding here. It hit a point where then it's forced its way over. So we gotta go to the right and down, just like that. Oh, oh man. Again, one more time. So softly, little teeny things over, down. Very light little pressure. And then we decide where it hits at the bottom, right? If it comes down and hits, maybe we've got a little bit of a little pool right down in here. We don't want it to be too bright, 
All right, so we're not gonna add too much paint and then we're gonna stretch it, be very cool. And just like that, you don't have to do too much. Have it fall over wherever you wanna have it fall, right? If you want to include this side right here, go the other way just slightly using the corner, just like that, right? And then we can start to build. Have those things rotate over using those same other angles, right? Maybe it falls down that way as well. And it's not just one pure thing or all depends on how we do the brush. And then we go back and we add different things. So different ways to do different stuff. Come in here with our two inch brush very lightly over to the side and down. Just softens that bit of paint, smallest little bit. Very cool. Very cool one, guys. Back here, we're going to take this paint, slide it back just straight to the side, right? It's gonna mesh up with all those little white areas. We don't need to go too far and show really too much of anything. Now let's pop a little bit of a bush, maybe a little sticky tree right up here in the front. Be very cool. So save this bit of white. We might use it later on our brush. Don't get rid of it. Save that over there. Let's take our bit of water in here. We're gonna push this out and then I'll show you something really neat. See how we get to the edges and it blends out because we got all that light blue or our blue color underneath. And then when we hit it with our white, it starts to glow. Just glow. And see why I told you don't clean off that brush? Because what do we need? We need some splashy bits of foam and mist and all sorts of stuff. And I understand the water wouldn't splash that much, right? But I'm trying to leave a little bit of color for us to move around the canvas. So we're going to grab it from here on the very corner with just the tip of the brush. We're going to slide it as far as we can this way just by making little circles. Look how far we can go. All the way off the canvas with the smallest little bit, right? So all depends on our what, guys? Our three P's of Paint with Josh. We talk about the three P's all the time. Now, who's a brand new follower and they might not know the three P's? You guys are gonna have to let them know in the comments right now. The three P's of Paint with Josh are what, guys? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. What do you think they are? Tell me in the comments now. Taking a little bit of our titanium white, just kind of smooshing it on, and we come out like that. A little bit of a little bit of movement in our water. A couple little white caps, a little here, a little there. All right, bing, bang, boom, very nice. Leave it, don't do too much. Do too much and you're not gonna like it. Come back over here, maybe we have one more little bit of water kind of leading away from our bit back here. And if you don't like any either, either of these two things, you literally swipe them away with your brush and never have to worry about them again. They'll just blend into the water and you'll have a little brighter pool down here. It'd be very cool. Very cool, just like that. Now, very lightly, gonna pull these guys so softly to the side. So, you know, they just kind of extend a little bit. You get that little bit of movement, right? What do you want yours to look like? Totally up to you. I say it all the time. Now we're gonna add a little bit of misty bit all the way up to where our water's coming out of. And if you have this little bit of background, uh, backdrop color back in here, you can hang little bits of flowers over. You can do all sorts of stuff by having that little bit of background mist. You gotta keep it in there. Now, we're gonna come over here we're gonna grab a different fan brush and we're gonna grab our half round brush. Our half round brush looks like a makeup brush. It's like a, a, like a round brush, but this is the half size versus the very large size. All right now, what we're gonna do with our limited amount of colors that we have, right? We're gonna take our black and we've only used blue and white so far. So let's just try to stick to a limited color, limited palette painting and it'll be nice and cold and freezing, right? Just like that nice goopy, chunky bit of nastiness on our brush is all you need. Then we're gonna come up in here. Remember guys, if you wanna buy this painting, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and you can buy this painting before it's even finished, before we get done, before we do anything. You can get it and reserve it for yourself because you never know when someone's gonna come swooping in and buy it right from underneath you. Just like your favorite car at the dealership. You've been watching it and watching it and then all of a sudden you go back there and it's gone, right? <laughs> Same thing happens at the Paint With Josh store. We're gonna come in here, drop a couple of these little flowery bits down. You see, when you come across that lighter area, it pops them out, brings them out into the foreground, and we'll have these super soft little bits of stuff happening back there, right? We can't see our whole river. Can't see where the edge is on this side. It's kind of cutting its way through the rocks. Very cool little painting, you guys. Very cool. One of my faves. I'm def I'm happy that we, uh, that we filmed a tutorial for this one. It, it, very happy about that. Okay, we're gonna come over here, a couple little bits, and you see if we come over that bit of mist, Starts to look more and more and more 3D, right? So hang them down, drop them down. Little bits of that darkness coming down, just like that, hanging down over the edge, right? Gets that little 3D look, but you gotta put that mist in first and then layer over the top of it, right? Now, why don't we come back in and just see what it's gonna look like if we have a few more of our little rocks, our little sharp little bits 
Maybe they led all the way down into that mist and you just couldn't see what was going on back in there. And you cover them with those flowers and say, woohoo, guys, that looks really cool. We pull it over to the edge over here. Very neat. There wasn't enough paint on the knife right there. So look, watch, come back. Just like that, just to have the color extend towards the sign, but not covering everything. Right? Have that guy, look, I'm literally like mushing on it because there's barely any paint right there. But because the canvas is black, it stands out as being so super close to us, right? So that's what you gotta do. You gotta keep those dark areas. Don't get rid of all of your darkness. And the further that we dip these guys down over our little thing, the more 3D they're gonna look like they're just trying to reach down into the water. It's gonna be fantastic. Okay, now, remember, you have to have that darkness there if you're gonna add some light to it. Now, we wanna add our little snowy highlights and stuff, so you gotta have that bit of darkness underneath it, otherwise it's just light on top of light on top of light, and it never works, okay? Now, let's wash off the brush and get rid of all that color. So, let's finish this little guy. Let's take our same little brush that we just beat the devil out of, and we cleaned it off, did all that, but a little bit of our a little bit of our white into our titanium white, right? Our, our liquid white into our titanium white. You have to emphasize that H. Now we're gonna dab it in. Dab, 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 dab. Gonna grab a little bit of the blue just to change it from the purest of whites, just like that, right? Little teeny tiny bits, and we're gonna come in with such light little pressure. And we're gonna leave dark areas. We're not gonna try to cover up all the shadows, right? We're gonna leave little pieces in between each little thing. We come down, we dab in little bits, brightness over the top of that bit of darkness, right? And those dark areas really provide some cool shadows. All right, don't wanna to push too hard. You're gonna make that mud, and that's not what you wanna do. All right, come in over here, separate these two, little bit of brightness. Sometimes you can touch it on the side of the brush. Woo, you get the coolest little things happen down there, right? Now over here, come up and touch this guy. All depends on our pressure how much we're pushing on the canvas, right? Our color that's underneath, it's grabbing everything. Pop, 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 pop. Couple little bits here and there. That brightness starts to hang over the side, guys. I was looking really, really cool. And you get all those little textury pieces, just excellent. Sometimes it just takes the teeniest, tiniest little flick in order to get it, right? Now, let's see, it looks like we had it a little too right on the brush up here. So what we need to do, every so often we make a mistake, right? No mistakes, just happy accidents. What we're gonna do is take our bit of paper towel. And this is what you guys love most about my channel I hear is that we show you how to fix these mistakes. Before you make it any worse, get rid of all that overly wet, soggy, muddy paint, right? Because we had too much liquid white in the brush and we came up and touched our bush. And so what we need to do is just clear away that area that was too soggy now we're gonna come back, cover over it, making our bush a little bit bigger, which is okay. It's, it's basically the art god's way of telling us that we needed to make our bush a little bit bigger. And we're like, nope, you're gonna mess this part up just so you have to go back and make it bigger, right? So come back with that same darkness, a little bit more. Just like that, just covering it with a little bit of dark. Now we come back with a little less pressure on our brush, a little less paint, a little less pressure, right? Come back in. But just meshed like we never made a mistake to begin with, right? Very cool. Don't get rid of all the darkness. You got to have those dark colors. Now let's throw in our big old bravery test and we'll be done. It was always my favorite thing about when Bob would paint. You'd be sitting there watching me like, I know he's going to throw in this huge tree at the end. Where is he going to put it? You know what I mean? Like, where is he going to put this massive tree? I know it's coming. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. But where is he gonna put it? That's always the fun part. So I got an idea about where to put my tree. Where do you guys think we're gonna put it? All right, where should we put a big old sticky tree or two in this painting? Should it come all the way down into the water down here? Should it be off the side? Should it come over the side over here? What should we do, guys? What do you think Paint with Josh is thinking? Now, let's come in and do some cool stuff. We're gonna get our black on our brush and our blue. We're gonna mix them up equally, just like this. I see how I left a space for my crimson. The crimson always goes in the center right there. Makes it easy for everybody. I keep them all in the same spot. So, a little bit of paint, kind of like an old hatchet blade. We'll go out there and chop some wood with this, with this ax, right? And let's see, we gotta come up. I don't wanna hide too much of my waterfall, so let's come up like this. We're gonna split in between the trees, 
down through the waterfall bit, right through here, right? Very light, bravery test, very light pressure. Light, 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 light pressure. More pressure, more pressure, more pressure, boom. Till we come down and hit, just like that. <laughs> Brings that tree right out in front to say hello to everybody. Right? Hello, what's happening folks? All right, let's come do it over here too. Little guy, light pressure until we start pushing more and more and more until we come down, right? Just like that, like little goal posts. Little goal posts. Remember, you guys are gonna be able to name this painting. So start coming up with a name for it and help me name this old guy. Come down, this guy maybe got stepped on by a moose when he was a baby. And so he's all growing off to the side. And then depending on where we finish, if you came all the way down to the front, that would bring this tree in front of those flowers. If you stop it in its little flower bed, and then we can go back and very lightly cover over the bottom where you have these cool little bits in there, right? Kind of hides the bottoms of our tree trunk. We stick it wherever we want to put it. And just like that, get these very, very cool things. Very cool things. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> so easy. Okay, let's wash that brush off. It's all about having a bit of darkness underneath before you put that light color down. Gotta have a bit of dark before you put that light color in there. Now, we're gonna come over here. Before we go adding our tree branches and stuff, let's take a little bit of that white paint and we're gonna come from the side. There's really, there's no discernible light direction in this painting, right? It's sort of maybe coming in right from the front. So. Let's pick our side over here. Say we all the light hit down like that. So we're going the right side of the tree trunk and just tap in a little bit of white, a little line just as it goes up. Doesn't have to be the most perfect thing. And then as we come back and we sort of tap again and tap again, it'll sort to extend itself, grow a little bit, but you gotta have a dark side of your tree as well. Don't wanna have it be all the same. So come back in here, tap it just on the right, right? And if you're picking up a lot of our dark color paint, Go back, add a little bit of liquid white to your, uh, your knife, and it'll come off the knife a little easier, attaching itself to the tree, Sp uh, kind of splitting the tree up from all of that gray color back there, right? Just like that, a little bit of light, splits it up from all of this other gray, but you gotta have that dark background and the dark side of the tree as well, right? A couple taps, extends it, kind of mixes it about half and half, and then we know we're good on this guy. Let's come over here. Just along the outer edge, right? We get to decide what he looks like along the outer edge, and then we'll come up. Tap, 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 tap. Doesn't even have to go all the way to the top, right? If you go all the way to the top, sometimes you lose that shadowy piece. So don't go all the way up here unless you're thick enough that you can have some shadow on the back and, and some light on the front. Right? As we tap down, tap, 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 kind of going over. Back and forth, it extends that bit of brightness on our trunk of our, of our trees. Very cool. Soft little guys out there, right? Now let's get a liner brush, a little liner brush, and some odorless mineral spirits, our cleaner, our paint thinner, our brush cleaner, baby oil, liquid white, uh, liquid, uh, sorry, liquid um, black, if you want to use liquid black. I never use this stuff, but Whatever you do, make it very thin on the brush. And that way when we come up here and we go to touch our little bits and we start dragging off little bits of branches, just like that, it'll come off the brush easily, depositing itself very simply. And that way you don't have to push real hard. If you have to push hard with this liner brush, you don't have enough thinner in there. Let's come right across the waterfall. Push that waterfall right back behind that bit of a branch, right? Just like that. Maybe this guy came out over here, kind of flew down that way. Bit of branch over there, maybe one over here. Where does it go? Anybody's guess, right? Anybody's guess on these little branches, where they're supposed to be, where you're supposed to put them. Just make sure they're dark enough so they stand out, right? Just like that. Now we're gonna come over to this other guy over here. A little bit off the side. We're not gonna see many details in these branches back here. This guy's back in the shadows. He's got that wicked awesome little gray rock behind him. So we're not gonna see too much. Maybe we can sneak a little bit of white onto our brush and just sort of accentuate these little branches out here. Just with a little bit of that lighter color and our liquid white mixed in with our darkness, right? Just on half the branch, doesn't have to show the whole thing. Really, like if you show the whole bit of branch, there we go, very cool. Coming out, leaning over the edge, and then we can go back over it, mix it, make it dark. However you wanna light yours up, totally up to you. 
Right, what if we came in over here on the underside with a little bit more of that darkness? There we go. And that way it's not so much bright, right? You gotta have that dark underside to it. Now, what if we came over here for our last few? I grabbed up on this guy, started dragging him off to the top. A couple little very skinny little bits that are out there. Right, it all depends on what you want yours to look like. And come over, grab a little bit of that lighter color just to brighten it up. Well, so way back in our shadows, these guys will stand out out here. A few little things off in the darkness. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Just like that. Very cool. I like this one a lot. And it all depends on how big we want our little family to be. Now, does anybody know the names that these birds represent? All right. I gave it away and said they were part of my family, but do we know the names of these birds? Because they're probably more famous than Paint With Josh. They really are. If I don't add those birds to a painting, the fans go crazy. They don't even care about what my painting looks like. They just want to see where the birds are flying through, right? I'm gonna come over here, add a little signature. Get it so lightly, so small, so it doesn't stand out all huge and crazy. Just like that, very cool. Well guys, this one turned out fantastic. I can't wait to see your version of it. Make sure you send it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day and pa-pow.